This is Karis, and you're watching The Arroyo Show. Family started paying me to sing for them at family dinners. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't sing. I didn't want to. And they all liked to hear me sing. And so they would give me like a little bit of money so that I would sing for them. Welcome to the show, you guys. My name is Brandon Arroyo. This is The Arroyo Show, and what a show we have for you guys today. My next guest spent 2019 as the voice of millions of TikTok lip syncs. Her new song, No More, is available now for streaming. Please welcome my guest at this time, Karis. How are you doing? Hello. I'm doing well, Brandon. Thank you. Yeah, it's so good to sit here and chat with you a little bit today. Uh, where are you currently at? What do you got going on? And how did you spend your Canada Day? Oh, right now I'm at home with my parents. Uh, this is where I live, uh, in the basement. Uh, and I've just been here. <laughs> and for Canada Day, um, it was actually me and my partner's one year anniversary. So I spent that with him and we just celebrated us two on Zoom. Well, congratulations on the anniversary. That's really exciting. Thanks. <laughs> Um, okay, so before we get into the new track, because I do want to talk about that, let's talk about that viral TikTok song from last year. Over 1.4 million videos made with your single, Princess Don't Cry. How did that first start catching on, and what do you remember from that time when it really started picking up some momentum? Yeah, so... I didn't even know what TikTok was. I had people start, my friends start to send me TikTok saying, um, I saw this on Twitter, they used your song. And then I would click the link and it had like 30,000 views and then like 100,000 views on these TikToks. And I was like, what is TikTok? I don't, I don't, <laughs> and so, and then the streams on Spotify started going up too. And it was kind of like a detective show a little bit, figuring out where it was coming from. And it just was TikTok, people were making, they found the song somehow and they were making these TikToks to the song and and that literally was what happened. And then the next thing you know, the song is just all over the place. What is that feeling like for you that something that you worked and put your effort into just is being seen and appreciated by that many people? What's that feeling like? It's, I, I feel very dissociated from it. It's very weird to accept. Like even now I'm like, oh, whenever I hear the amount of streams it has or the amount of TikToks that were made, I don't think I really fully can grasp how many people have listened to this song, but it, I'm I'm honored and flattered. <laughs> okay, so I gotta ask because it's totally grabbing my attention. Just behind you, there's like some sort of painting on the wall with like this big blue mark on it. What do you got going on back there? Anything exciting? Okay, so this whole interview now is just gonna be about my partner, but here, let me give you a here cute goes. peek. He painted this for me. <laughs> it's Amalfi, it's the Amalfi Coast. Oh, you can't oh, see wow. it. Wow. Yeah, you, we can actually see it pretty well. That looks really cool. <laughs> it's hard to see, but that's the... And that's a painting? That's a painting. Wow. It does not look great here on the wall, but this is where my temporary place for it until I find somewhere to put it. <laughs> but you know what? That has, like, so much feeling. And you have a little desk over there, too? Oh, my gosh. This is just, like, really exciting. You got the, the whole thing running over there. All right, yeah, so, like... Yeah, pretty good setup. What's cool is like little pieces like that can have so much like meaning to you personally, right? Totally. When did you first get that? What was your reaction to it? Now, now we got to go painting wise. Now we're going painting. All right. Well, yeah, we were supposed to go to Italy um, and we're not upset about not going to Italy. But uh, when COVID happened, we have a long distance relationship. So we were separated um, and we've been apart now for about six months. And he sent me that painting being like, this is for when we go to the Amalfi Coast, like we planned, like just like oh a my gosh. kind of gesture, which was so sweet. It's about 89 degrees outside here right now, but my heart is what's melting. My goodness, <laughs> I'm feeling it. Karis is on the line with us right now. Her new single, No More, is available for streaming now. In fact, added to Spotify's New Music Friday playlist in more than a dozen different countries. Let's talk about it. So where did the inspiration for this track come from? The inspiration for this track, we got into a room. It was me, Ryan Stewart, and Gavin Brown that wrote this song together and in Toronto. Um, and Ryan brought in a track. And as soon as I heard the track, I, I just felt this sense of, it's like sad, but empowering. And that's my favorite, like sweet spot in music genre is like stuff with a little bit of a sad uh, present moment, but an empowering, hopeful message to it. And I just thought of this like dude I kind of was seeing once 
who just didn't treat me as well as I knew I deserved to be treated. But I was like, whatever, like, it's fine. That loser. I know. And it's about the moment where you're like, no, you know what? That's not fine. There are dudes that will send me paintings of the Amalfi Coast. I don't need to settle. Yes. And yes. It's realizing that you are a spectacular woman or man or whom's to ever listens to this song and realizing that you deserve so much more from people in, in appreciating who you are. I feel like tracks like that, where it's written from like that type of personal experience, really just adds that extra oomph to really be like, you know what, I'm feeling this, and it comes through in the music when you listen to it, because the artist is feeling it that much more. Totally. I completely agree. I'm all about throwing all the personal stuff in there. What did the process look like for you with making this song? Was it quick? Was it one night, like one session? Or was it something that you had to come back to for a couple of different sessions? It was pretty much one session, which isn't normal for me. I'm such a perfectionist. So usually I, I fester over these things for a few weeks. But day one, we just got in there, good vibes, and it just flowed so naturally. We like really all felt it was going to be special. It was one of those. <laughs> Which so is rare. when you're releasing new music, especially for something like this, when it, it has that special feeling right away, who's the first person that you send the track to and say, hey, you gotta check this out. Come listen to this track real quick because it's, we're feeling it, we're vibing with it. Yeah. Who's, who's your first person to bounce it off of? I'm so bad. I send my tracks to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think anyone in my team knows that, but I like all my friends, my family, they all have already heard all my music, like a bunch, but, uh, Probably first person would be my brother or probably my best friend, Liz. So the team is finding out right now and typing right out the now, email. Right. Please do not send out the music to your whole contact <laughs> list before we let it release. Yeah. yeah, I'm feeling like, you know, there's not really a chance it's going to leak or anything. So I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm free with it. <laughs> for for younger musicians, and I mean, you're still pretty young yourself. You're, you're a very young musician yourself, but for young, young musicians that are maybe just beginning to pick up a guitar, just beginning to record their voice on, on a phone, what tips do you have to get to where you are right now? Like, advice, what do you have for them? I think I'm the best person to answer this question because I'm really my whole career has kind of been just trial and error, just trying things. And even when I, when certain paths haven't worked out for me, it's always opened a new door onto another path. So like my number one tip is put yourself out there and just try. Cause you're, you literally won't know if you're good, if other people think you're good, if, if you found your sound, like it takes time and trying and trying and trying. So I think just don't give up, keep trying. And the more you get feedback, the better you're going to be. And you have, like, I feel like success, if you never give up, it's, it's going to be there. You're gonna do it because if she's yeah, curious and the new single is out right now. No more. Go ahead and check that out. Get to streaming it. Get to playing it over and over. Play it for your dog. Play it for your grandma. Play it for everybody that you play your music for. And uh, and check it out. No more officially available now. We are beginning to wind down the interview. These are the final five questions. It is your who, what, when, and how. Let's dive into it. Who do you speak with the most right now? Probably my partner Ben. <laughs> Other than your phone, what item do you use the most each day? Uh, oh, that's a great question. It's definitely my phone, but probably my computer. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, I mean, hey, that one works. It's like a larger version of a phone, but like, we'll accept phone. it. It's totally cool. Or my makeup. The makeup. And I'm totally going to go there right now. This lighting fixture that you have on the ceiling is just a masterful piece of art as well. Let's right, keep going with the, like, oh, there it is. Wonderful. Actually, I was talking, there's like a sculpture on your ceiling of your ceiling light there. It's wonderful. All it's right. Fantastic. So when did you know that you wanted to be in entertainment? Um, ooh, when I when my family started paying me to sing for them at family dinners. <laughs> Wait a second. So the family would pay you. They're sitting around the meatloaf, sitting around whatever. And they would say, here's five dollars. Go sing us a tune. What's the story there? Yeah, I wouldn't sing. I didn't want to. And they all liked to hear me sing. And so they would give me like a little bit of money. So I would sing for them. I was like, OK, I can, I can go with this. And when you were that age, what, what age was this? And, and what were you singing? Oh, like 10. And I, I was definitely singing the the I Believe song from the Olympics oh, at that wow. time. Remember, that's like, I believe the time is right now. You know oh. that? 
I remember singing that for my family. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. All right. Uh, second to last question. Where is your dream vacation? Italy. <laughs> Italy. And finally, how do you define success? If you're happy, if you're truly happy and you feel fulfilled in what you're doing, I think you're successful. Thank you so much, Garrison. It's been a privilege to sit down and chat with you a little bit today. Before we let you go, if you could give that final 20-second elevator pitch on why to go check out No More and why you love the track yourself, tell me, what is it? Why go check out the track? Why you should go check out my track, No More, is because it's empowering. It's fun. It gets you in the feels. And it's a song that is good. <laughs> <laughs> That is the best way to describe it ever. Why go watch it? Because it's good. Because and it's good. <laughs> uh, Karis is on the line right now. Her new single, No More, again, available for streaming right now. And again, Spotify, go check it out. It is a fantastic track. Karis, thank you so much for giving a little bit of your time with us today. Thank you so much.